How's everybody doing today? This is Anthony from The Basement Reef. If this is your first time tuning into our channel, we're a retail aquatic pet store and houseplant shop located in Columbia, Missouri. We sell both saltwater and freshwater aquatic livestock as well as tropical houseplants. And here on this channel, we talk about all sorts of things related to both of those hobbies. Today though, we're here for yet another unboxing video for this shipment from Sea Dwelling Creatures. This is where we get most of our saltwater fish in the store from. We go through a variety of other places for coral and stuff like that. But as far as fish, uh, if it's not a captive bred clown fish in our store, chances is it came from Sea Dwelling Creatures. At this point, it's looking like an unboxing video from Sea Dwelling is going to become close to a weekly feature here on our channel. We're not going to do that every time we get something in from it. If it's just a box of nothing but bread and butter fish, we probably won't film a video. But as long as there's something cool, we'll be filming a video. And today, there's definitely a few cool things in this order. There's a couple of really rare blennies and rare wrasses that I'm excited to show you guys. So, let's get to the unboxing. The first thing we always do when unboxing a fish shipment is simply get into the box and make sure that everything's all right. As we're doing so, we're gonna start floating these fish for temperature acclimation. Here, I'm gonna be thinking about compatibility as well as if any of these fish have specific needs, such as requiring a sand bed. I'm also gonna think about things like putting a cheap fish in with an expensive fish. I don't wanna accidentally cost myself by getting things sick here. There is one fish we will be drip acclimating today. To do this, we simply cut it open and add some prime to neutralize any ammonia, and then we'll start a siphon with some airline that we've tied some knots into. This will allow us to slowly add our water to the shipping water, acclimating the fish much more slowly and comfortably. After everything is finished temperature acclimating, we start cutting open the bags. This first fish is an orange spotted tusk fish. It's technically a type of wrasse, but not like the small ones you usually see in reefs. This guy gets to be almost two feet long. So really, this guy's still a baby. I like them because they're super goofy looking. They're technically reef safe, although they might be rough on the odd inverter too. And obviously you need a big tank for them. I think they're neat though. This brings us to our first of two rare species of myacanthus blenny. This first one is a green canary blenny from Fiji. He looks a lot like his cousin, the canary blenny, who's probably the most represented of the myacanthus genus in the hobby, but his green coloration really makes for a striking difference. He's a little stressed right now, so we'll give him some time to start feeling himself and check back in on him later. The second myacanthus blenny we have today, and much less common, is this bundoon blenny. I find their green and yellow coloration with black silhouette to be quite striking. They kind of remind me of a mix of Kamahara blenny, which is another myacanthus, with the green canary that we just saw. Honestly, if I was going to keep a myacanthus species in one of my tanks, this would be the one I did. I guess it's important to note that all of these myacanthus blennies are also known as fang blennies. They technically have a venomous bite, although that's not usually something you need to worry about. After this, we have a group of six fish that are going to be going into the tank together. They're a type of small schooling cardinal fish called margarita cardinals. You'll also see them marked sometimes as striped cardinals or checkered cardinals. They're neat though because they're a true schooling fish. They don't get very big and they school really tightly together. Lots of other cardinals like bangais and pajamas get marketed as schooling, but honestly, when they get big, they don't do that so much. Here you can see that they're already acting as a dither fish for our Swiss guard basslet, which is nice. He's been really shy since he's been in the store, so it's cool to see these guys get him to open up right away. Next up is a rusty angelfish. They're not rare by any means, but definitely underrepresented and underappreciated in the hobby. They're a type of centripige angelfish, so same genus as your coral beauties, lemon peels, and things like that. You can kind of see the resemblance to a coral beauty, but having the spots instead of the stripes makes for a striking difference, and I think that they're much cooler. This next fish is actually one of the first saltwater fish that I ever kept, so I have a soft spot for it. That's a chalk basslet. They look a lot like their larger cousins, tobacco basslets, but these guys only get four or five inches, and in a big enough tank you can keep them in a school. We only have this one in though. They like to spend a lot of their time hiding into the rocks, so I expect that's what he'll do here. He gets a hearty greeting from the shrimp, and then, indeed, into the rocks he goes. 
And that finally brings us to our fish that's been drip acclimating. It's ready to go in. Obviously it's a wrasse, but I'm not gonna tell you which. If you can identify it from above, props to you, cause this guy's not very common. I picked out a tank with sand for him, cause this is a species that definitely needs it. I expect that's where he's going to go. Here we see him kind of surveying the landscape. Now you can see it kind of start to notice the sand bed, goes behind the rocks and disappears. So where did it go? Well, into the sand bed, of course. This guy is a Moirai leopard wrasse. They're nearly identical to a more common species of leopard wrasse, the Kuiper's leopard, but these guys come from Japan and they're rarely collected. Like all leopard wrasses, they need a deep sand bed and a large mature tank to get by. Fish from Japan don't get collected too often, and as I understand it, this guy has a super narrow range, so the fact that he was available at all is amazing, and I was quick to snatch him up. Now, occasionally when I know I have something like this coming in, I'll reach out to a couple people to give him a heads up. So this guy's already spoken for. He needs a large tank that's appropriate for him, and that's exactly where he's going to go. But if I see one again and you want one, let me know. Here, he's about to go back into the sand bed. And I think that's probably all we'll see from him until he gets a little more comfortable here. And that takes us to the end of today's video. This is a pretty exciting shipment in my eyes. That wrasse takes the cake as far as rarity, but there's a handful of stuff in there that I don't see very often and I'm very happy to have in the store. So if you find yourself in the neighborhood this week, stop by and check it out. All these guys are great to watch. As always, this is Anthony, and thank you so much for watching our channel. Please subscribe, that would help us out a lot. Thank you.